Now, now here's well. Thanks, Julie. When it comes to now, now here's well. Thanks, Julie. When it comes to relationships, logic usually takes a backseat to emotion. Most couples consistently fight over the same two or three things. The big question is why. According to psychologist Jeff Arbach, the answer usually lies somewhere in your past. He has written about the subject in his book, Irritating the Ones You Love. Jeff Arbeck, good morning to you. Good morning. You say the things that usually attract us to a potential mate remain the same, uh, physical attraction, common interests, but you say it, those are not the things that really draw us in. That's what right. are we talking about? Well, those traditional values make people enjoy one another, and it's part of what makes people appealing, but there's this sort of radar or magnet that pulls people together that really has to do with more of unconscious factors, emotional factors. You talk about something called emotional hormones. What makes one person's emo emotional hormones more attractive to it, <laughs> say someone else's? It, 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 it's the, the unconscious part is really unbelievably astute. And so there's a sort of a blueprint for what makes one person more attractive. And this is what's in the book. It's called JARS, and it's a list mm -hmm. of 18 very basic life principles like fairness or control or guilt. Give me an example of a jar and how it would work for someone. Well, the 18 jars, everybody has um, all of them to some degree, uh -huh. but typically there's three okay. that are very sensitive to that one particular person. So if somebody has an unavailability jar, that would mean in shorthand that they had a parent who was maybe very loving, but wasn't really around for some reason. It could be work, it could be alcohol, it could be that they traveled, whatever it was. And so that blueprint unconsciously would be part of that radar that would mm. draw that person to people who would mysteriously be unavailable to them, even though the person might be knowing that they want a very close relationship. I'm going to get back to the jars in just a moment, but you also say we are attracted to not only the, the, the good things in our parents when we're looking for a mate, but also the bad things That's as right. well. well. Give me an example of that. <laughs> well, um, so for instance, let's say somebody was a surgeon and that uh, the things that made them so great as a surgeon, such as perfectionism, uh, would make them very effective in the one area, but yet as a parent, that streak is consistent through their character, so they're going to be the type of person who's going to find little nitpicky things wrong. And so the child can love some of the beautiful sides to that jar, and yet be injured in little bits and pieces by the negative sides of it. Okay, how do we go about finding what our jars are? Uh, there's a couple ways to do it, but for the most part, when people look at this list of 18 jars, uh, they're very simple concepts like control or guilt. And as they look at the 18, certain ones will just jump right out at a person. So somebody may see several, like fairness or consideration, and go, eh. But if they see control and they go, ugh, I hate it when mm -hmm. somebody tells me what to do, then that's a giveaway that that's a jar. Or they can go about it in another direction, with, which is to think about their parents besides all their parents' wonderful qualities, what some of their less desirable qualities, consistent qualities, might have been. Like, they might think, geez, my mom was great, but she was kind of a control freak. And that would be one of the ways to know. <laughs> okay, let's say we know what our jars are. Is it important for us to know what our partner's jars are as well? Well, yes, because the, the other main concept in the book, besides the jars, is, is the invisible connection. And that's really uh -huh. the, uh, this gut-level principle or pattern about the glue that draws people together and that invisible connection is really all about being attracted attracted to people for dysfunctional reasons and the dysfunction is the jars so for instance if somebody has uh, an irrationality jar they will be drawn to someone who will act irrationally and that will keep driving them crazy and irritating them over and over again so it helps to know your jars the other persons, and somehow the combination of those six jars together is what we're trying to control as well as possible. Another thing I find interesting, if you meet somebody who, who, who's very nice and compassionate and all that, but you don't have that spark. That's right. I mean, do you just, you should say you should not just blow that person off. Is that right? Or should you? Well, it's, in a perfect world, it may be that that person would be the, in some ways, healthiest person for you because they really wouldn't drive you crazy. On the other hand, there'd be no passion. <laughs> Uh -huh. And so there's this sort of um, delicate balance between just the right amount of irritation to make it fun and exciting, and yet not so much that it becomes a toxic relationship.
Is it possible to have a happy life with someone who actually opens up all your jars, whether they be three jars, four jars, whatever? Mm -hmm. It is, although everything in the book comes down to the fact that there are unavoidable patterns. So no matter what we do, we're going to be drawn to people because of the invisible connection and because of the jars, but we can get better versions versus worse versions. 18 jars, you said. That's right. A lot of potential trouble out there. There's a lot of potential trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jeff Harbaugh, thanks a lot. My pleasure. Very interesting stuff. We appreciate it. My pleasure. And now, here's Mark McKeown. Most Americans know Bob Geldof as a man who organized $29.95 a month. Well, we've heard plenty about how the extra baggage that we're carrying around us may prevent us from moving ahead in our relationships. Well, our guest today suggests that jars, yeah, jars, that's the problem. In fact, three jars. That's what we can blame for leaving us feeling empty and things not working out. Well, today we're going to find out more about this from Dr. Jeff Auerbach. His brand new book is Irritating the Ones You Love. Nice to have you here, Jeff. Nice to be here. Jars. Jars. Well, what? Can be jarring. Yes, it can be. It sure can <laughs> That's be jarring. true. And, and jars are jarring also. Um, Explain. Well, the, the metaphor jars came from, it's just a glass jar. And basically what it is is a receptacle or a container of our whole early life experiences just kind of filtered down and condensed into three jars or three containers. So really it is our, our baggage, but you can kind of put it into three categories? Is that that's what you're right. saying? That's really the, the part that the book introduces that's um, taking what people would know as common sense, that we all have buttons or issues, and it makes it more systematic that there's actually 18. But yours are different from mine. Well, because there's 18 total, which are all just life principles. So in some way, everybody has some of all 18 of the jars, mm -hmm. but there's typically three that really jump out at, for that particular person. And those issues are particularly sensitive. And anytime somebody will overreact, if they have, if they're in a relationship, then they get into an argument. Typically, the jars are underneath it. Because you say most of our relationships are really, or at least the people that catch our attention, that's really determined by our unconscious mind, isn't it? That's right. And that's one of the, the, the book in some ways reveals uh, some secrets about relationships that society just doesn't teach us. And the biggest one is that the draw, the thing that draws people together and that makes them stick in a relationship, although the traditional uh, concepts such as funny and charming and sensitive do matter, that there's really this most powerful force that has to do with dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And those are the jars. And it's not, although people hear the idea and they say, well, if I don't like those particular traits, such as controlling or critical or whatever it is, then why would I, why would even my unconscious want to draw me to someone like that? And it really has to do with the concept of mastery. And it's all about taking the thing that we didn't get a chance to master when we were children and recreating it and getting a chance to get it to turn out different. So the kinds of issues that we were trying to deal with with our parents but That's not right. aware of That's we right. were too young. Exactly. We're now working out with our spouses or our... That's right. And, and in fact, you're, you're right, uh, Tom, that, that uh, uh, the, some of the issues we weren't aware of at a very early age, but then eventually we do become aware. You know, we can love our parents very much. And yet, we can have a parent, for instance, if the person's a surgeon. Well, this is somebody who would have a very strong perfectionistic streak that will run all the way through their character. And we would never want to remove that perfectionistic streak because it's one of the strengths of making them a great surgeon. At the same time, it shows up at home, and the person can love that parent very much but still be somewhat injured you know in bits and pieces by those behaviors so we can become aware of it and we can grow up knowing that that's something we don't care for and yet we'll sort of mysteriously get drawn to people for those very reasons and we have to remember they were someone else's children as well absolutely you know, they're the victim of their own early life events that's right as well and they got maybe six jars that you do <laughs> exactly. the jars are multiplying that's right no but how do you kind of obtain this mastery i mean recognizing i guess what these buttons or jars are is the first first step that it really is it's a huge difference uh, amazingly um that if we generally know that we have buttons versus if we know specific labels for instance if a couple if somebody were to in the book there's an example of this infamous coffee maker 
argument uh, that was really about nothing, but people can get into a very heated argument because somebody goes to make the coffee and the grounds are in there from the day before and the person may, a little more annoyed than normal, say, hey, I told you to empty out the coffee maker and if that person, the, the spouse, has a criticism jar, mm -hmm. then they'll overreact uh -huh. right away to that and so just knowing that label and all of a sudden you say, ah, that's my jar and that tends to help people diffuse and step away quickly. And then there are actually tools that go beyond just the recognition sense. Yeah. All things to kind of not irritate That's the right. ones you love. Irritating the uh, ones you love is the book. <laughs> Dr. Jeff Auerbach, thanks so much for being with My us today. My pleasure. Thank you. We're going to take a break and head over to the kitchen, do some cooking, crunchy French toast. Just a minute. in a way that no one else can. Well, our next guest says it's exactly that ability to annoy you that secretly attracted you to him in the first place. Here to explain is psychologist and author of Irritating the Ones You Love, Dr. Jeff Arbach. Hey, Doc, what's up? So, basically, you're saying that we're all just dysfunctional. Yes. Oh, well, um, that was right. easy. That was easy. Done. <laughs> yes, Example? but, um, well, it's, it's a loaded term, dysfunctional. So it uh, basically means that everybody has issues or buttons right. and that there are really patterns to those issues and that because of that, we end up being drawn to particular people and relationships that have to do with those dysfunctional issues. Actually, relate from where do we learn that behavior? You can probably guess from our parents, from our family. You're saying that our parents are to blame for all of our dysfunctional relationships. No. Because <laughs> um, you know how I love my mama. That's yeah. right. That's right. I wouldn't want to offend your checking. mama. I'm just yeah. checking. Right. Well, it's a, it's a very common question. And when I, when I talk about this, I tell people that the word blame literally has no place in the discussion. It is an understanding that there's a certain part of the human condition. Everybody has issues and certain annoying behaviors and things that might be a little bit hurtful to the child growing up. And it's, as opposed to blaming the parents, it's understanding what some of those patterns were so you can know right, what you are. But what if are. growing up you have a completely cool relationship with your parents and everything just runs smoothly? I'd like to meet that family. Yeah, me too, <laughs> really. Um, <laughs> well, um, I've never run into that in literally tens of thousands of people that I've worked with where they would say that there's not a single area that was hurtful in any way to them. But I think we're talking about relative terms. Um, some people really complain about their relationship with their parents and others feel that they had a, a wonderful relationship and there's just certain things they pick out but eventually those whatever those things were even if here's what I don't get I don't mean okay. to interrupt but I no just problem. don't get the irritating or why why is the is that just psychobabble that we're that we're you know drawn to people that irritate us just the way our families did I mean what would be I don't understand what's appealing about being irritated it's not appealing and in fact that's why the, the, the pattern is so frustrating and that's what the book is for, is to help people to understand that it's really an invisible pattern no. that's underneath, mm -hmm. and because it's invisible, it's called the invisible connection. Mm -hmm. It's sort of really this radar, this unconscious radar that draws people right. together. In many ways, there, while there might be many features that they love about the person, or right. funny and charming, but there's certain patterns to things that they will get on each other. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, because okay. I mean, I'm very happily married, and everything I do bugs my wife. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's probably a theory there. Quick That's question. Right. So, if we're saying that we're drawn to these things that we find irritating, are you saying all relationships are doomed? Well, they're doomed to have this thing called an invisible connection, which is not necessarily a bad thing.